<laughs> Hail Mary Tarpon. Nice little jumper. I think I've got them worn out already. Yeah, you're going to be tired. Take him back to the dock. from there. <laughs> you can jump. You cannot hide. Another nice little juvenile suckered in at the dock. My friend, are hooked good. Jump in my oh, crap. Ah. Tarpon by the tarpon. Hold on, buddy. Just like that, comes right out. Beauty. There we go, that was my picture. Tarpon 140 and a tarpon. Buddy. There he goes. Today's knot we're going to review is the good old fisherman's knot, also known as the clinch knot. Now this is probably one of the first knot that most novice beginner fishermen start using and then as you graduate you start using these other knots like I've gone before but what a lot of people don't realize that it does come back into play in specific circumstances so that's why I still keep it in my arsenal and still use it quite a bit. Now the reasons the times that I do use it is for example now during tarpon season when I'm using this 80 pound or 60 pound or 100 pound mono leader okay 
I'll use the good old fisherman's knot because I just need a plain and simple, easy knot. Uh, like I talked to before about the Palomar knot, that's also a nice and easy knot, but when you start using these larger diameter lines, it becomes too bulky and it's very hard to cinch down. So I don't like using that. That's when I'll go to the clinch knot. Now again, remember when I'm, I'm talking using it for dead baits because anytime I'm using live baits or artificials, I use some sort of loop knot. But if I'm dead baiting it and I'm using heavy mono, the fisherman's knot is totally fine. Uh, what you have to understand is a lot of times for these species where you're moving up to uh, higher line class, it's not because that you're worried about breaking the line. What it's for is chafing resistance, okay? For example, the tarpon, because they have the sharp gill plates or they would be rubbing along their body, so sharks, snook, any of the bigger fishes that becomes an issue. Um, so it's not necessarily that the, the uh, tension is gonna break it, it's that resistance uh, that you're doing it for. So therefore, like a, a, a real tricky knot isn't necessary. A good old fashioned fisherman's knot will work just fine. Okay. The other time that I utilize it is when I'm doing my little pinfish or bluegill uh, fishing for bait, little three, four inch uh, bait. And I'm using these long shanks with a very tiny uh, uh, eye of the hook there. And I'm using very light lines, a little four pound line or so. Okay. And little fish, I'm not needing a, a high tech, high breaking straight line. I just need something that's easy to tie because you're looking at how small the eye of this hook is. You're looking at such a real fine uh, diameter line. A fisherman's knot is exceptionally easy to tie and therefore is really easy to go to. Now there is the improved clinch knot, which is to go back, loop it through it. But again, you're adding more difficulty to it. Um, and in the case of larger diameter line, you're adding more bulk, which you don't want. And again, it becomes starting to become hard to cinch down. All right, so let's tie this up real quick and I'll show you the ease of it, but then we'll also go what the negative side of it is. Okay, take our hook, got our leader, run that through. Give yourself a little bit of slack. And then what you want to do is to pinch the two lines and the eye of the hook. Okay. Then we can start doing our wraps. And you don't need to do a ton of wraps. I just do four or five is fine. Okay. Once you finish the wraps, when you, when you let go of the, uh, the loop there, it leaves a nice easy opening to push that leader through. Okay. Then all you have to do is hold on to the tag line and start sliding by pulling the main line down and you'll see that knot starting to tighten up there. This point you want to make sure you lubricate it. A little bit of spit works good. And then once it's tightened down and it's nice and even, you can let go of the tag line and then you could just start pulling on the main line and you can see it all start cinching up and cinching down. Give it a good tug there. Make sure it feeds all the way up. Okay. Give it a help there if it's not going all the way because you want it all buttoned up and nice and set. Okay, so you have nice even barrel wraps there. Once that's all torqued down, which is very easy with this large mono and the large hook, then you can take, cut it off. And there you have a nice fisherman's knot that's not gonna go anywhere. Quick and easy to tie, you could do it blindfolded um, in the dark, and that's gonna be fine. Negative sides of it. I think this is, it's not so much that it's a problem with the knot, it's the problem of the assembly part of it, or actually specifically the finishing of it. Uh, for instance, when people are doing this light mono with uh, a small eyed hook, same thing, put it through the eye of the hook, pinch it off, 
do your wraps. And then back through. Hold the tag and the main line and start cinching it down. Lube it up and then start pulling it down until it cinches up. Then what happens is you come back, trim off the tag, and boom, you think you're done. Cast it out there, fish gets hold of it. But the problem with it, and that's why I find more limes with this lighter line like this than with the uh, heavier lines is, because you're so fine detailed there and there's really not a lot to hook onto this little hook and people are thinking, well, it's just a small fish or whatever. If that knot is not cinched down totally and with this fine diameter line, there's a lot of slippage that'll occur. And as that uh, line tensions down, it actually sucks in that tag line until it um, pretty much unravels and pops loose you reel in and then you have the little coilies, meaning you're not unwrapped, and then you hate this knot and you start bad mouthing it. When in fact, really all it comes down to is that unlike the, uh, the big uh, hook and the heavy mono where you can really grab onto it, you didn't take the time with the same amount of time with a smaller hook and clamping onto something, get some good wraps on it, and put some good, uh, tension on that knot to make sure that it's totally seated, it's collapsing down on itself and clinching it and really torquing down, then going back and cutting that tag line once you know for a fact that that is not gonna slip anymore. And then that'll alleviate all your problems with the clinch knot. So, hope that was helpful and thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.